in industrial buildings, we usually do not have concrete floors or concrete slabs on the floors. Rather, what we do have is either checkered plates or gratings. And unfortunately, both of these cannot really be relied upon to provide the necessary lateral stiffness which is needed in order for the for the floor to behave like a rigid diaphragm so what we do instead is provide horizontal bracing in the floor all these elements which you see on the screen are horizontal bracings and their purpose is to create the rigidity of this floor and you will usually note that they're in the form of these lateral trusses going around the floors and obviously they can be many different designs but the whole idea is that both in the framing direction and in the braced direction uh, your uh, you will have forces and the, the the forces which are originating inside the floor the earthquake forces which are originating inside the floor for example will need to be carried to these columns or will need to be carried to the vertical bracings through the columns and this is the purpose of these horizontal bracings to create that that diaphragm effect to create that uh, lateral stiffness within that um, floor now obviously uh, we need to design them and there's a certain placement which is optimal and that's the job of the engineer one could look at the look at it, this picture and say you know why not put some over here or why not put some over here well all configurations are theoretically possible some would be better than others depending on the geometry which you have but once you do decide depending on these distances and how much earthquake forces you have then you have to after you've made that decision you have to decide on the layout of these horizontal braces now what the engineer will um, not worry about uh, will be the the exact location the exact orientation uh, of these elements so let me just delete this for example and enter another one just to show you so let me enter a horizontal bracing so the en engineer might just come like that do like that and you know uh, leave this horizontal bracing as it is in the analysis um, model and uh, because the engineer doesn't really care about where exactly this horizontal brace will be and the reason for that is that the, as far as the analysis is concerned, whether he leaves the brace like that or moves it a bit further down, the analysis results will be the same in the in the center line model. So, and the engineer doesn't want to waste time on deciding on the exact orientation or the placement of these elements. It's only when you come to the detailing uh, where you have to then take the engineering. Let's say this is the engineering model, and now the detailer is going to start doing the detailing. It is at this point that the engineer, sorry, the draftsman needs to take a decision. And the decision is how to place these or how the, the placement is there, but how to actually orient them and how to decide on the exact location. So you may decide to change the rotation, for example. And the reason why you, in this case, you might want to do that because you want the angle to be looking down rather than up. So this would have been a bad choice because in this sitting like this because in uh, industrial plants have a lot of dust in the air and usually the whole environment is not very clean dust will keep accumulating on top of this in somehow in some way so you want that those to kind of fall down as much as possible or easily cleanable so it's, it's usually a good practice to make them look down especially when they're channels maybe not so much in angles but in channels you need you know instead of making them look up you'd rather uh, have them looking down he could make the decision of moving them down a bit like that but typically you will see that they will be down a little more so maybe 80 millimeters something like that and this is very common that you have your horizontal bracing a little further down not at the exact top of the floor and this is interesting because from a statical point of view you would actually want these to be exactly at the top of the floor this would be ideal for, for from an engineering point of view this would one might think that having them at the exact center of this profile might be a better idea, but that's not true. Having them at the top is a better idea because their purpose is to take the horizontal loads coming from the earthquake, for example, or the wind or whatever lateral loads that we have. And uh, let's say they're earthquake loads we're talking about, and there's equipment sitting on this on this floor, and there's the whole, the self weight of the floor as well. 
So as far as the equipment is concerned, which is the dominating load, obviously, assuming that the dead weight is not dominating, but uh, the equipment load is dominating over there, or the live load is dominating, but the live load is all sitting on the tops of the flanges. All the live load is sitting on the top of the flanges, and, when the, and, and it's fixed to the top of the flanges through bolts. And when that live load converts into a lateral load because of the earthquake acceleration effect, that load is actually applied at the top of the flange level rather than the center line of the beam. So your, most of your lateral loads are actually coming at the level of the top of the flange. So ideally, if you could have this whole truss of horizontal members exactly at the top flange level, that would be the best uh, practice. But unfortunately, that's not um, mostly possible. It, it can be when, when you have nothing on top of this floor. But a lot of times we have these checkered plates or gratings which, which form the floor itself. They've been, they've been welded to the, uh, to the beams, but they're there and, and they're not strong enough. And they're very thin. Uh, these thicknesses are like two millimeters, three millimeters of that range. So even a one meter span to cover uh, the area between two beams is actually very flimsy. And once you start walking on that or you put something heavy on that, this can bend in itself. So it's very common practice to have these, these uh, checkered plates strengthened by, by using these stiffeners at the bottom, this, uh, this, this angle profile which you see over there. This is welded to the bottom of the checkered plate. And this, uh, this piece makes the whole checkered plate a little stronger to take vertical loads. But because of the presence of this one, because of the presence of this little angle over there, this horizontal bracing now cannot, will, will, will clash with that if it's placed at right at the uh, top of the flange. So it's normally good practice to keep your horizontal bracings a little further down. So 80 is a good number. You can, because those angles, those strengthening angles uh, behind the checkered plates will be typically of the size of 50 millimeters or 60 millimeters. And then, I mean, obviously they'll be designed, but this is a general number, general uh, thing, you can, rule of thumb you can go with. So having them about eight, eight centimeters or 80 millimeters below the top of the flange is a good place to have them. Now, one uh, more detail you might want to worry about is uh, the size of this beam. Because if this beam is, uh, so for example, in this case, it's IP140, and I've placed it 80 millimeters below, so it seems to be okay because I still have about 60 millimeters from the bottom of this beam. And that's a nice number because the, web, the, web, the flash thickness is 6.9 millimeters. So, and what we need to not forget is that there's a little radius over here. So there's a flash thickness, it comes up and then it turns up. So this, if, if this was, for example, not IPE 140, but IPE, let's call it uh, 100. Let's say that was the size of this beam. Now we're getting into dangerous territory because we will create a gusset plate over here, which is going to connect to this one, for example. And that might actually end up hitting that, that radius, that curved area depending on the final exact orientation. But, but, but basically the point is that you're getting into dangerous territory over here. So the, it, your decision of putting it 80 millimeters below also depends on the size of the beams which it's framing into. So if this is the situation, you might actually, so let's say these two beams are both IP100, you might want to do something like putting all of them all these three at that, uh, at that point, rather than 80, but putting them all the way to like 130 below. So in that case, they can be connected together and they can go under the beam rather than uh, one from the left and one from the right, and then these two can be connected together. So these are the little tips and tricks you need to keep in mind when you're dealing with horizontal racing. You have to make a design, an overall design. That, that design needs to ensure that the lateral loads Create load. So let's say you have a lateral load of, uh, say, 10 tons in this direction, in this part of the, the floor. So this 10 ton lateral load in the, in the X direction will need to be taken by this truss over here and this truss over here. So you need to divide your loads into two parts, say five tons on each truss, and then this truss will be 
designed according to that load. And similarly, if there's a lateral load in the y direction, then this truss will take that load. And similarly for the other part of the floor. Now, obviously, you will not be thinking like this. You'll just enter all your lateral loads and the program will do the rest. But the point being that this whole design, this whole business of uh, horizontal bracing is pretty int intricate. There are more than one way of doing it. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. And it's not just a question of the spatial distribution of the horizontal bracing. You also have to worry about whether you will be able to place them at the right points or not. Sometimes it can get so complicated that instead of having these little trusses, you end up with these large horizontal braces going right through the floor. And then, you know, they, they go through elements, right? And, you know, in, in several pieces, but you go like one big piece and one big piece. So that will obviously depend on what the engineer wants to do. But these are little tips and tricks that you have to adjust your horizontal bracing as delivered to you by the engineer. The engineer will deliver them to you in some awkward situation, something like this. And you will have to make the decision of what you want to do with it. So this is something I wanted to say, that when you're dealing with, once once you get the model from the engineer, take that model and you do, you, you bring that, uh, you basically modify the orientations and the positions of the members in such a way that then you can start detailing directly with those orientations. And this is called adjusting the model. We'll talk a lot more about adjusting the model. This is probably one of the most simplest cases of adjusting a model, which is horizontal braces in which it's primarily both sides move together. The start and the end go, go down the same amount. We get much more complicated cases of adjustment because we want to protect the finite element model as we are doing all this. If you notice, although these, these uh, horizontal braces have been moved down, but even then, as far as my horizontal, as far as my finite element model is concerned, my finite element model is still intact. Let me turn off the release symbol so it's easier to see. Yeah, you can see that all the nodes are still connected to each other. So my finite element model is intact, and my elements are exactly where I want them to be, which is the whole idea of adjusting a model. We've just talked a little about adjusting horizontal bracing. Now, there's an automatic command to do this. We'll talk about that later. But this is if you're doing it completely manually, just to give you an idea about what adjusting means. The whole idea of adjusting means to protect the finite element model and yet place your elements at the location where you want them to be detailed.